So there were two trees. There were two trees in the garden. And I submit to you, was one of them the Christmas tree? <laughs> I submit the question to you, was one of them the Christmas tree? There was two trees in the garden. When first reasoning on this, before coming to do this vlog here, we was going to call it two trees in the garden, not one of them was the Christmas tree. But then in considering what is, you know, what is before us, okay, what's going on right there, okay, a little menu came up, all right, the video's still recording, okay, so two trees in the garden, the Christmas tree, was one of them the Christmas tree, or was not one of them the Christmas tree, there was two trees, remember, there was two trees, right, in the garden, two particular trees are spoken of according to the first book of Moshe, first book of the Bible, first book of the scriptures known as Genesis, right? There was two trees in the garden, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 3, two trees in the garden. And one of the trees is the Etz, the Etz, the Etz HaChayim, the tree of life, the Etz Chayim, the tree of lives of life. And we have this also in the last book of the Bible, the canonical Bible called Revelation. One's receiving the right to access the tree of life, right? The tree of life. So there was the tree of life, literally in the Hebrew, the Eit, right? The Eit Chaim, the tree of the lives, right? Chaim, interesting term, life and lives. And there was a tree of the knowledge, the Da'at, the Da'at, the knowledge of Tob, Wera, tov wera, modern Hebrew tov wera, tov wera, right? Modern Hebrew tov wera, ancient pointing tov wera, wera, and evil. The so knowledge. Now get this: the knowledge of good and evil. So in considering the two trees in the garden, and considering the Christmas tree, really this is a, about the Christmas tree and the knowledge of good and evil. The Christmas tree and the knowledge of good and evil. I'd like to get into that particular reason and show the connectivity of these two points. Now, what appears to be happening nowadays is there's a lot of like pushback, right? A lot of pushback because, you know, social media or Daniel, Daniel, like in the Bible, Daniel, Daniel's prophecy, where it says, and they shall go to and fro. And knowledge, right, shall increase. They shall go to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So now with social media, right, with social media, and with the information, superhighway, people are learning more and more about things, you know, good <laughs> and evil. Tovera, tovera, right? They're learning about things that are good, you know, more knowledge of good and evil. So even in that way using two main verses in the scripture first from genesis bereshi where it speaks about the two trees well actually the tree that was in the midst was not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that's where kawa or eve the isha where she was wrong when she was speaking to the nahash and that's the reason why the nahash or the serpent said you would not surely die because you have to read carefully kawa's statement what did Hawa say? What did the Isha, I say Hawa, that's the Hebrew for Eve, the Isha, the woman, right? What did the woman say? Because she describes the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the positioning, right, of where it is, the positioning. The one that's in the midst of the garden is the Eitz Chaim, the Etz Chaim, right? The Etz Chaim, that's in the midst the tree of life is in the midst. And then it says, and there's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But what's clear about the scripture, Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3, very important to compare that. And I notice that a lot of these arguments that people be having, you know, about the Bible, or about a scripture interpretation, one has to pay attention, right, to how they read and how they hear the word. Right. And not to superimpose, you know, like what we think on the word. But what is the word trying to show us? What is the word saying? Because that's when it really became clear, you know, at least even clearer 
to I is that Eve, as Eve says in, in Genesis, according to Moses, Moshe's first book, she says, the serpent beguiled me. She was beguiled. Right, because there's a there's a pseudo a pseudo gnostic gnosis pseudonymos gnostic science falsely so called gnostic falsely so called idea that's circulating out there that well actually Elohim Yahweh Elohim speaking about Jehovah Elohim or the Lord God according to translation that he was a liar that Elohim was a liar that it was the Nahash that the serpent that was speaking the truth. Right. And that the woman, in some sense, was a savior. You know, there's, there's this convoluted idea that they use the Bible to try to bring forth a convoluted idea that when you read the Bible and you read it with due diligence. That's all we have to look at the scripture. and Remember, it's a Hebrew. It was a Hebrew scripture, the Yehudi, my scripture, Israelite scripture. It wasn't given to everybody in the world. But now you got everybody in the world because they want to say, well, they're either Christian or they follow Jesus or Jesus is a savior or, you know, and now they think that, well, their ideas is what it really meant. But they are superimposing other ideas on top of it. But here's the thing about the Christmas tree, right? A lot of ones are pushing back on it because I think a lot of Christians are beginning to find out based on the knowledge, right, of, of, of good and evil, right, concerning the Christmas tree, right? Now, ones will say they're doing it for Jesus <laughs> because it honors Jesus. I was even listening to a little bit of a little debate. Um, brother uh, priest uh, Daniela, right, Daniel Daniela was on there with Black Jesus Minister, you know, Black Jesus Minister was saying that the Christmas, you know, tree is not pagan, they were talking about whether it's pagan, whether it's heathen, whether it really celebrates, you know, um, what it's said to celebrate the birth of Christ, or whether it comes from so-called pagan origin, now, I did a whole video on pagan and etymology of pagan, we need to start to use the word heathen again, the heathen, my uh, back against the wall, the heathen, the term that the Bible uses, the Bible never uses pagan, but you hear people having these big arguments about pagan, instead of using the words the Bible uses, heathen, or you could use Gentile, or you could use the nations, because all those words right there, Hebraically in the translation, come down to goyim, goyim in the Hebrew, which can be translated and has been translated as either heathen in these verses here, or as as Gentile in these verses here, or as nations. The more basic word for goyim is nations, other nations, other nations other than call Yisrael, the other nations. Now it's interesting with Adam, right? Wa Hawa, or Adam and Eve, the Isha and the Isha, the primordial Isha and the Isha, right? In the Gan Ba'edin, right? It's very interesting the man and the woman, right, in the Gan Ba'edin, right? Because some say that, well, in Genesis chapter 1, we have either pre-Adamites, or some say there might be pre-Adamites, ones before Adam. People ask the question whether Adam and Eve were the only two people, were there other people? We're not getting into that right there, but the same analogy, if there were other beings, like human, human-like, right, angel to man-like or human-like beings, Nephilim, right, on the face of the earth at that time, right, that the same separation between Adam, Adam, Wa, Hawa, Adam and Eve in the Gan Ba'edin, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Delights, is the same difference between the children of Yisrael, Israel, right, being brought about as a nation, as a people, as a distinct entity, corporate entity, after the other nations, after the other nation and nationality of the world were already formed. Right? That same kind of contrast. I want to show the contrast between right the other right the other beings, right, the Adam, generally speaking, and the Adam singularly speaking, how there was one's what is it, planted a garden east, right? Garden East in Eden, right? East in Eden. That means that there was still West Eden, North Eden, and South Eden that had other things going on. But there was a garden, right? A garden. Uh, Hebrew, the word is Gan. Gan in them hard, like the Gennet, the Gennet, the Gan, like Ganna, right? A Gan, but Eden, right? Eastward 
in Eden. So the same contrast between Yisrael, Israel, and the Goyim. The Goyim are the Gentiles. The Goyim are the nations. The Goyim are the heathen. Falsely and incorrectly called by mainly Christians and Bible readers and so-called pro-KJV and pro-Bible, English Bible speakers, they use the word pagan. That is a basic a Roman Catholic, right? It's a, it's a Romanist, right? It's a Gentile terminology. And that Gentile terminology confuses a lot of people. People need to really look at it, what it says. It says the heathens are the other nations, the other nationalities, right? The other nations other than Yisrael, which were not in covenant, right, with the Almighty. Just as we have a kind of a covenant in the sense of Adam, right? Adam from the Adama, Adama, the reddish brown ground, like that Kemet like ground, the Adama. We have other. Right? We have other beings, right? Even we just say the, the animal creatures or other beings, and then we have a select one brought into close proximity and a covenant with Yahweh He Elohim, right? The power, he who be who he be, the power, the Almighty Jehovah for power, right? The Elohim made with Adam, right? So that's separation, right? And one having a commandment. Right, the other nations haven't really been given a commandment. When were the other? Maybe through Adam, through Adam they received the commandment, but the other nations didn't receive the same commandment or covenant and commandment, rules and regulations, Torah, direction, instruction as the Bnei Yisrael. So let's keep it in this context right here, because we're going to speak a little bit more about the Christmas tree. Right? Was the Christmas tree? Is the Christmas tree the knowledge of good and evil? There was two trees, two trees, two trees in the garden. Christmas tree, tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is the reasoning right here, right? So the tree of knowledge, there's a tree of life, right? The tree of life. And then there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? In other words, do it Yahweh, right? Do it Yahweh and live or choose to do it your own way and die, right? So it says, also in the middle of the garden. Now, see, when they do this, they do this tricky thing in the midst of the garden. It's clear the word also really shouldn't really even be there. We looked at the Hebrew right there in the Masoretic. The word also shouldn't be there. It's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is nearby, but the tree that is mentioned to be in the center or the midst, betok, in the Hebrew, betok, right? Betok, hagan, then in the midst of the garden is the eitz chayim, the tree of chayim, chayim, of life. Of lives, right? See what they do right here. They have a little bit of Hebrew here. Let's lift this up right here. They have a little bit of Hebrew here. It says, reading from right to left, betok hagan. Then it says, we eight ha daat to wera. So what they do is they break down part of the verse, right? Part of the verse right here from Genesis chapter two, verse nine. They break down part of the verse and they have in the midst of the garden and and eighth hadat tovera right and the tree of the knowledge the eighth hadat the tree of the knowledge tovera of good and not good or it's not good or evil but good and evil that means with one tree right the first tree so I don't know if you can see this clearly right here right this is betok this is the second part of the sentence. So what they're trying to suggest here is they're trying to suggest that the tree of the knowledge of Tovera was in the center with the midst. But actually, according to Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, it states clearly that it's the eight Chayim. In fact, let's do this right here, brothers and sisters. You know how we do. We like to get into, yeah, the boom. There we go. About to touch on this Jeremiah thing because the Christians are pushing back. There's a lot of Christians and even um, black Jesus minister on the side of the platform with the debate with Daniela. Even he said it right um, there too. Um, 
black Jesus minister and the rest of them that, that basically a lot of Christians are beginning to get uncomfortable with the reality right of the of the Christmas worship in the heathen that they, they're worshiping Christ, Christmas as heathen right as heathen even Paul says we are not sinners of the Gentiles Paul clearly says we're not sinners of the Gentile. Move that over there, right there. So you can see this up there. So the midst of the garden. So here's a verse here. Genesis, Bereshi, chapter 2, verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. You see that right there? It says the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And, and the tree of, the, of knowledge of good and evil. Now, it's clear both here and even furthermore, as we follow along with, the, with these two trees, that the tree of life, right, that word also shouldn't be there. That word also shouldn't be there. I know ones and ones trust the old translators, although they may have made mistakes, than some of us as the new translators, until, you know, until, you know, we could say, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant puts it out. A lot of the so-called Negro Israelites and Negro Christians, like the be, you know, Black Jesus minister, they might believe then, right? But it's interesting because he was actually defending the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, the Roman, the Catholic Church, right? Like they had some authority, and he danced around Daniela's question. But it's very interesting that ones are trying to defend the Christmas tree because Grandmama did it. And great grandmama did it. Our our ancestors may have done it for whatever reasons, intentions, that whatever that knowledge was. But if we know better, if we know better now, we should do better. So a lot of the Christians are beginning to know better and do better, and it's upsetting one. So they're trying to defend, right? Counterfeit Christians or questionable. Let me say, questionable Christians are trying. To, and the question is not us questioning their so-called Christianity. The question is really in them. How they're trying to defend this Christmas tree, this Santa Claus, December 25th um, of December winter solstice thing, in spite and despite the good and evil evidence. So the whole Christmas, December 25th thing is a good and evil. It's about the knowledge of good and evil. Because when you do any research, it's a hodgepodge of a bunch of good and evil. We're going to show that, right? momentarily but here we want to show this right here let's, let's show this to you right here just a verse by itself so this part right here let's just highlight this part right here you see where we have the tree of life also in the midst of the garden what should be there is the tree of life in the midst of the garden when you have the and as a conjunction that's why it comes after the comma because that's some, and something else. So the first thing is mentioned is the tree of life. It's interesting because there were these two trees, and from the two trees, right, they would do what they did. They would choose the tree that they chose. That always was a very interesting curiosity. Now here's the Hebrew. I want to show you the Hebrew verse, and then we'll go back to the presentation, or at least to the slide. Okay, here's the here's the part that we just highlighted in the in the English from the KJV, Genesis 2 and 9. Here it says, We're eight. We're eight. Ha chayi betok hagan. We're eight. We're an eight. Eight. The eight. Eight. Right? The eight is the tree. We're eight. Tree ha the chayi. The tree of the lives. The lives. The life. But the Hebrew word is plural. My right? lives. Right? Ha Hayim. We eight ha Hayim betok hagan. Betok in the midst. Hagan. Now it's clear there's four words here. Right? Reading from right to left. We eight and tree ha Hayim of the life or lives. Be talk. Be in on talk. The midst. In the middle. In the midst. Be talk. Ha the gan in the midst of the gone. I just went through all these four these four words right here. And if one need be, let's go through it right here. Just so you can see. Like just to show the show and proof. The first word is eights. Eights. Eights is tree. You can see eights is tree. Right there. Tree. Right? Eights. Tree. Wood. Right? Eights. 
right? Chai, chai, right? There's chai. The word in the Hebrew is chayin. Chayin, which means lives, living, right? Lives, living, right? And, okay, let's go back here. Okay, excuse me, brothers and sisters. Okay, we went to the, which word was, okay, chayim. This was this word right here, chai, from chai. The talk. Here they have tavek, but tawek, talk, talk. Tawak, tawak, talk. Tawak, talk. Mitz. Tawak, but talk, but tawak, talk. In the midst, the bisection, in the middle, right? But talk, right? But talk. Then the last word right here is ha gan, gan, the gan, the gan and enclosure, right? The gan, referring to the gan, the Aden, gan, right? The gan that's fenced in. So just as Adam, Adam, Wachaya, right? The Ish, Waisha, the man and the woman were in the gan, the Aden, in like an isolated place, right? In the gan, the Aden. In that same sense, right? From all the other ones on the face of the earthly plane. So was Yisrael by virtue of the Brit, right, the covenant, and by virtue of the of the mitzvah, the commandment, you know, law, statute, and commandment, the Torah direction was separate from all the other nations. Right? Israel is a goy. Israel is a goy. I say again, Yisrael is a goy, but it's a it's a it's a Kadosh goy, right? Kadosh, a holy nation, a kingdom of the priesthood and a Adosh Goy, and a set-apart nation. So in the same sense, Adam Wachaya, right, they, or Wachawa, Wachawa, I said Wachawa, Wachawa, they were separated as well, right? And they were given a commandment. And the commandment, well, basically, Adam, Adam, that's why we hold Adam with being more responsible, it says that, you know, um, you know, because of Adam, right, all man, all humanity, and therefore Yeshua is the is the last Adam, right? Yeshua Hanotri, Yeshua Hamoshiach, according to the Brit Chadash, according to the Gospel, is the last Adam, right? So one more place I want to show you something right here in that slide that we just put up there, right? That slide that we put up there. Let's scroll down here so you can see it here. This is what they did. So here. They, they, they went to like two words in those four words and then they did like this. That's what you see on the screen with the tree. I just showed you the tree. Let's just show the tree again right here, right? These are these words right here. These are these words right here, right? And basically it's a quote of, of these words up here, right? It's a quote of these words up here, right? But the word also, remember the word also should not be there. The word also should not be there, all right? So let's go right there, and let's go back over here, right? Let's go back over here, right? And so where it says, Bitok Hagan. So what they're trying to imply is in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. No, that's not what it says. So what they're doing is like they're, they're quoting part of a phrase and then a full phrase. So it's half of a phrase. So the, the first two words, betok hagan, in the midst of the garden goes with we'etz ha'chayim, and the tree of the lives, the tree of lives. All right, so right here, 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 you're gonna get out of this right here, right? Because some of this is like background, it's context and background, right? And this presentation and this, a manifestation, this demonstration here. This is like some background, the background to the context here, right? So the two trees, the two trees was one of the trees. How can we link right here the so-called Christmas tree, right? And the whole counterfeit Christian, Latter-day Gentile, Laodicean, Laodicean Christian, lukewarm Christian tradition in the latter days, right? The Christmas tree, Santa Claus, reindeer, um, um, what else they do? All the 25th of December solstice, right? So-called birth of Christ, which is totally contradictory to what we have in the scripture, right? A census was going on at that time. It was, it was at a time of the year where the shepherds were out tending to their flock. It was actually around the time of Rosh Hashanah. 
right, or the September 11th time, right, um, Addis Ahmed, right, Ethiopically speaking, was around the fall festival time corresponding with the Sukkot, the birth of the Moshiach Yeshua corresponds with Sukkot or tabernacles. The word became flesh and tabernacled amongst us, right? Which is actually months ahead around the September, October, roughly around the September, October time. That is the time of the birth of Yeshua HaNotri, right? Now, what is observed, this is another vlog we're going to do, right, on the nativity, right, and the wise men, right, the wise men visiting Yeshua and this Mariam, St. Mary, Holy Mary at home, right, totally different, months apart, months apart, right, so, the Christmas tree, the knowledge of good and evil. When we get into this Christmas thing, right, we start to examine this Christmas thing, right? Okay, this is part of the, the exhibit here too, just to show this right here, right? Part of what we're saying about the comparison of Adam and Eve mm -hmm. in the garden with Yisrael, Israel, right? In Torah, in the covenant, in the Berit, right? In the covenant. So it's for us to breathe Chadasha, the renewed covenant, but in the covenant, right, and in an enclosure. So we get the, the Gan Ba'eden, right, the Garden of Eden, Genesis 2 and 9, the tree of life in the center, Betok Hagan. Then we have the Garden in Eden. Now remember what the scripture says, that Yahuwah, Yahweh He Elohim, right, the power, Hailehim, and Lohenu, he planted a garden where eastward, doesn't say that in the scripts, eastward where in Eden, eastward in Eden, right? So one thing we know is the positioning of the Gan, of Hagan, of the garden, was somewhere in the east of the Eden, of the Eden. It was in the east. That means that the west didn't have the Gan, right? The north didn't have the Gan, and the south didn't have the Gan. Right? And then there's, there's a land of Eden. Right? Right? So we had a garden. Right? The garden of Eden. And in the center of the garden, we have the Eitz ha -chayim. And then outside, we have what? The dry land. We have the dry land. That's one of the distinctions when you go from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 2. People kind of miss over that because they're looking at it from a pseudo-religious um, pseudo theological view and not looking at it from the Hebrew the true view and what is being expressed and following the evidence and the information that's being expressed this is brought out even clearer in the Hebrew but if you already know the English right even the interlineal studies and search can hopefully even give more detail right so the same likeness of Adam and Eve being in the garden in a covenant being isolated from the dry land and the other places of the Eden and the other place of the world, the other living creatures, so forth and so on, is the same position that Yisrael, as we have Israel, we have the Holy of Holies, right? We have the holy place, right? There's the outer court, the courtyard, and there's the land of Yisrael, right? To say like Yerushalayim, the land of Israel, Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, and Zion, right? And Zion. So that kind of likeness right there is also important to know. This is maybe a better way of presenting it so you can see it kind of side by side right there, right? So on the right side, right, this is what was given to Yisrael vis-a-vis -vis all the other, if there were pre-Adamites or there were other nations or other peoples, right? Because some believe, as we said, some believe that Adam was the first man, right? Adam was the first man. Right? But when we read scripture, right, it is true that the same things that is said of Adam in the basic man likeness can also signify other beings and creatures. Maybe this is why they find some of these kind of ne not Neanderthal, but these kind of bones that they find, you know, in certain parts of the world. Right, all over the world, like Ethiopia, the so-called Lucy bones, other kind of old archaic bones that they say, you know, and when they put these bones together, it's not quite 
man-like in the more refined form of man. So there seems to be a, this is where evolution comes in to say, well, one evolved from the next, but there's a lot of missing links, right? So this is also the distinction between Adam, right? Adam, right? Where Isha, right? And Ishto, his woman, his wife, Hawa, in the Gan Ba'edin, is the same distinction between Yisrael, right? A Kadosh Goy, a holy nation, and the Goyim, the heathen, the Gentiles, the nations, right? Now, I'm going to call them pagans because pagan is an is a unbiblical, unscriptural word, and it's a confusing word, and it takes us away from what the Bible is really defining for us. We live in these latter days and times of the Gentiles, right, of the heathen, of the nations, of the nation states, when you understand that aspect, then when you look at the scripture, you can see the prophecies that are ongoing and have been going on that the Hebrew scripture has accurately, right, pointed to, right, from beginning to end, right? So here, 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 let's go. Now we can get into some of the other kind of details. These were some summaries, but just to show the connection, right, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end because the... Um, I call it counterfeit Christian apologists. There's a lot of counterfeit Christian. When I say counterfeit, I'm not saying that their faith or belief is counterfeit, right? That's between them and, and the Almighty. But in this common, this common, you say salvation, as the scripture used that term, the common salvation, their misinterpretations, right, are wrong. And if we study the scripture, right, and we compare scripture with scripture, Right? We can actually see the true view. And the true view is that there were two trees in the Garden of Eden. Right? There was two trees in the Garden of Eden. Right? And one of the trees was the tree, the one in the center was the tree of life, the Eitz Ha Hayim. And the other tree was the Eitz Ha Da'at Tovera, right? was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the interesting thing that we begin to notice even more clearly is this Christmas tree. The Christmas tree, you, you got any knowledge? You, you, do you know anything about the Christmas tree? What do you know about the Christmas tree? <laughs> oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your branches green delight us. Uh, uh, something delight in thee. I, I think I heard a version of it like that. Maybe it's further on. My right? Christmas tree. Now, some object, right, to this categorization of it. It could be because when they were growing up, they remember their mother, their father, their, their granny, their grandmother, their grandfather. They remember, you know, they got these memories. You remember the tune? Memories don't live like people do. They always remember you, you know. Yeah, but memories, just the memories they have. Because these memories, these fond memories... And maybe, you know, like a lot of, you hear a lot of folks, especially a lot of black folks, a lot of lost found, and lost, lost, and lost found black people, you know, saying stuff like, well, um, you know, my, my great, my grandmother, my great grandmother, grandfather, they were really holy rollers. They were, you know, holy, holy folks. And, and, and this is the way they did it. Back in their days and time, they say pork was all right. And now you go into scripture and saying that what, what Yeshua what Jesus says, you know, to them about, you know, it's not what goes in, you know, the mouth that defiles the man. It's really about eating bread with unwashed hands. And that that does not defile the man because this whole tradition, the halakha, that the later day Yehudi, and we have to say for the record, you know, especially the black Jews, we the black Jews, Yehudi of the first century, right, had from that intertestinal time, the 400 years from Malachi to Matthew, some overzealousness. They said, don't be overly, what it says, righteous, right? Or overly, some say wicked, right? Or overly righteous. Well, some seeking to be overly righteous, overly zealous. We, we have this going on amongst us nowadays, even as, as Israelites, as Hebrews, coming into the, the consciousness of our true ID, uh, you have many of us sometimes, I mean, you, you, you should know this, if you have come into the light, right, you find that because you was in the dark, there's a, there's, there's a zeal. Even the scripture speaks about, oh, what zeal, 
that one's half. Now that they find out that they've been wrong, what zeal, all right? In fact, this one right here, let's just touch on this. Now, we're gonna get back to this one right here because as we said, we see that more and more ones are beginning to realize that there's more to what a lot of people have been saying, right? Concerning the knowledge of good and evil, the Christmas tree, knowledge of good and evil. My, the Christmas tree. I'm, I'm still working out, working out what sort of a title we'll have on this one. Try not to pack it all into, you know, this particular video, but try to stick with the message that we began off on. That there was two trees, right? Was one of the trees in the garden like and liken? Can we liken the Christmas tree to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Well, it seems as though from all that we hear about, read about, study about, you know, with the Christmas tree, Santa Claus, December 25th, this Latter-day Western Gentile counterfeit Christian tradition of, of Christmas. So we hear about it. And what do we hear about it? Right now, when people bring the idea of Christ and Christmas, usually that sounds like a good thing that's someone the savior when the savior was born right the one who according to some um uh, some um missionaries and 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 proselytizers out there you know some christian proselytizers some christianizers out there will say that th this is this is good news right the birth of the messiah right Yes, we won't disagree with them on the basic terminology right there. So they'll tell us about Jesus. This is when, when Jesus, when Yeshua, you know, was born. And this is why we observe it, you know, because it's the most blessed event. Okay. So observing the birth of Yeshua, that the word became flesh and tabernacled and dwelt amongst us. Actually, not in December, but actually some months early around September, October time the birth of Yeshua Hanotsri. But that being another subject matter that we can fully explicate and go into the scripts and go into the evidence to show and prove on that, right? But when we take the fullness of what we hear about Christmas, the first thing you hear about Christmas, even though there's the Christmas tree and Santa Claus and reindeer and all these other things that really have nothing to do with what we read about in the Bible, They'll tell you the good, right, about Yeshua, right, Adonai Yeshua, and the birth of Yeshua, right, and when he was born, the circumstance of his birth that we find in the Gospels, and how this is the most blessed event. And then we continue to go through our studies, and we start to find what this, uh, where this Christmas tree come from. They say that it's pagan or more better of heathen origin, right, of heathen origin. Now, the first point I like to make is that if one is of other nations, that's not an Israelitish nation, perhaps it is, you know, perhaps that's your own tradition, your own custom, right? If you say you and your people were never under this covenant of Israel that was given to the Israelites, right? And not under this, 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 this heritage, this divine heritage, you know, and this covenantal relationship then we're not really directly speaking to you. Maybe this is your custom. The Christmas tree is your custom. But now to the others about what fear, what zeal, right here. This is the overzealous verse, 2 Corinthians 7, 11. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. Like when you find out that, okay, you was going around with this Christmas tree, Santa Claus, Easter egg, bunny rabbit, all these other heathen, heathen, emphasis on the word heathen, my custom and traditions of other nations. This is why when we look at it from the Jeremiah perspective, some people are saying the Jeremiah verse, oh, that's way back then. That's talking about what they did back in the past and it has no relevance on the so-called Christmas tree and the Christmas tree tradition. It's like, I guess, Stockholm. They might have a Stockholm syndrome. There's some Christian, they mean well, they probably are relatively speaking in Christ good people generally speaking but they have these bad vices 
that they don't recognize that the Israelites, the Israelite brothers, their their non so called Christian as they they're Christian, you know, brothers and sisters are telling them about these things, are telling them the absolute right and, and exact and correct thing. And they're thinking, oh, these are some convict Jews, convict Israelites. It's come out of jail. They just became Israelite the other day. They're on the street corner. They're out there thinking they, they're trying to steal white Jewish identity. You know, they, they come off all these cockamamie kind of stuff, right? But what happens is that after you see you've done the wrong thing, you come into the truth, you sorrow after a godly sort. But here's what it says, what carefulness it wrought in you. Because you knew that before you knew the truth, you was doing the false thing. So now that you know the truth, there is some sorrow. But the sorrow should be in context after a godly, right, a Jah-like, to imitate Jah in spirit and in truth. What carefulness it wrought in you. Like what carefulness it does. It makes you careful. You know about what you're going to do. Yea, what clearing of yourselves, clearing your conscience. Yea, what indignation. You have indignation. You might be even a little bit upset for yourself. I can't believe I used to do that stuff back then. Yea, what fear, what reverence, what, what, what respect you have for Yahweh Eloheinu, our power. Yea, what vehement desire. You have a desire to communicate this to others. Yea, what zeal. You see right there, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. In all things, ye y'all have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. So what Hawari Aulos Rav Shaul, right, Rabbi Saul, or to the Christians, the Nazarenes, the Christianoi, Apostle Paulos, who magnified his office. Of course, you could do that because Paul says, you know, we're not sinners of the Gentiles. Right? We're Jews. We're Yehudi. We're Yehudi by nature. We're not sinners of the Gentiles. Some might not be able to get this. As we said, if you come from another nation that never had this covenant relation, you don't ascribe to the Israelite identity or heritage, Yehudi, Jew, black, or otherwise. You, it might not resonate with you. It might not, this might not resonate because it's not in your spirit. Because when he says, speak to the who? The children of Israel. Speak to who? Speak to the children of Israel. So you, you might not be a child of Israel. Whether whether in spirit and, or in truth in the sense of, of the ethnic, the DNA, or in the spirit, you know, being Abraham's children, truth. You might just be a member of the religion that's called Christianity. You know, I mean, that, that's what's going on nowadays. We're in the time, remember, we're in the times of the Gentiles, right? We're in the times of the Gentiles. Let's continue right here. Let's continue right here, brothers and sisters. Let's bring, so idolatry. So some are trying to dismiss Right? Some are trying to dismiss this particular point of reference to Jeremiah. They're trying to dismiss. They're saying, well, that was the past. How many times, listen, when it talks about for unto us, right? the child is born, the son is given. You know, when it speaks of, about that, that's, that's uh, Yeshaya, 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 Isaiah. That's Isaiah. Ain't that Isaiah? But they apply that verse to the birth of Adonai Yeshua, Robeno. They, they apply that verse to the birth of Yeshua HaNotri, to our sovereign, our Adoni, Adonai. They, they apply that to our Rebbe, right? Ro, Raboni, Yeshua. They apply it to him, don't they? That verse was something, some people say that from studying the text there, it was talking about a child that Yeshua and his wife, who's a prophetess, would have. They said that, that verse actually what it says, like a child, you know, for unto us, right? A child is born, a son is given, and all of that, and all of this. That actually, that took place. It said, oh, a virgin shall give birth. This is actually said to apply, right, to, to Yeshaya's time. But yet, right, during the Brit Hadash of the first century time, we have even the apostles and others applying the spirit of that word to the birth of Yeshua Hanotri to Jesus of Nazareth. So you see how disingenuous. And I just got to point out, I like some of the things he say. Might not agree with some of the other things. You know, he say, um, what's his name? He had came on, had and passed the Bennett. Right? Pastor Bennett, you know? He came on to defend. But as I listened, I said, hmm. 
I said, wow, this is interesting that a lot of black folks, right, who might even admit or not admit, right, the whole Israelite, Hebrew, we, the black Jews connection, right, but they are seeking to defend this Christmas tree December 25th thing. Right? Now we got a couple other exhibits to quickly show you, but everything that we start to learn about the whole Christmas and these traditions right, that they do right, comes down to idolatry and idolatry of other nations. Idolatry that we are specifically right, forbidden right, from an Israelite perspective. This is why they always come at us and say, oh, you Israelites or y'all who believe that y'all Israelites, you know, are Hebrews, you're trying to take Jewish identity. You mean we're trying to take European Jewish identity, right? With some sources out there, even written by European or white Jews, Eastern European Jews, say that when they or their people adopted um, Judaism or that form of Judaism, it was like 740, 700 something AD. Got the books, got the sources, the evidence is out there. Right? There's also the 13th tribe, I'm not talking about that book, but the next one, I think Zion Lex had pointed that out as well, right? 740, around 740 AD, right? So even they themselves, European Jews, came into observance of a faith that prior to they adopting this Jewish faith, they were not Jewish, right? So this can apply in spirit to them too on a religious level. But it applies deeply to us as black people and then to have other black folks, even like black Jesus minister. He said he's an Israelite and he's a Christian, but he's always like either hating and speaking. What was interesting, speaking foul, speaking what well, the quote that he was talking about with the unwashed hands about it's not what goes in your mouth, but what comes out because it comes from the heart. Right. You know, and slander and blasphemies and all these kind of fornication, all these things. And it's interesting because that's all that was coming out of his mouth against other Israelites. Because he calls himself a Christian and an Israelite, but he's not like these so-called project Israelites, these prison Israelites, these one day, you know, you just came out of jailhouse, is you know, all these kind of insults and more. I'm not going to regurgitate, right? Now, need to redo a lot of these memes folks those who listen i know some of y'all do listen whether first hand or second hand got to update stop using this word pagan call them heathen right the heathen right the heathen just like that song heathen them right the heathen right heathen roots of christmas for the customs of the people are vain for one cutteth a tree out of the forest now they're saying these verses here some are trying to say they're misapplied even though other Christian scholars, people believe as they do, have done their research and diligence, and they even recognize. And it's not just now, but we studied the last 2,000 or so years of what's called Christianity, whether East, West, North, South, whether, you know, whether it was Eastern, right, or whether it was Western, like Rome, we Western, or whether it was like Eastern, like the Ethiopian, Orthodox, the, the Coptic, the Armenian, Armenian, the Syrian, the Indian, the Miaphysite churches, right, that have a very old and even linking with the, with the Judeo-Christian, that Judeo link with Ethiopia. So we have like an Israelite influence there. And to see how closely many core things are with what is called Judaism, right, and what even the Messiah Yeshua practiced, right, that way of the Yehudi. He even says so. He said to the Samaritan woman, you worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation of the Yehudi. That's why any Israelite who really is an Israelite indeed that has studied the scripture like Daniel, right, he did a good job in the breakdown of that particular verse speaking about the disciples eating bread with unwashed hands. Right. And how that was a violation of a tradition and a custom that they made it a kind of a halakha, like a traditional law. Right. They made their own tradition, their own custom of the same authority as the Esaret HaDibarim, as like the 10 words, as HaTorah, right, as a Torah, right, that we have in the first five books of Moshe. So right here, 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 the next point right here to share 
is this this right here let's let's bring up the fuller full because you gotta you gotta see the verse you gotta see the verse for yourself let's look up learn learn not see this is why we we move this over here right let's learn not okay so here learn not we're gonna go to okay right here jeremiah 10 and 2 it says thus saith yahweh yahweh right Yahweh, the Holy One, blessed be He. He who be, we be. Learn not. Learn not the way of the heathen. It don't say the way of the pagan. It says the way of the heathen. See, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance. Right? For so many ones to love to talk about the Bible, 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 and quote the Bible here and there, and then to be calling people pagan, and then even going against so-called Romanism, the Romanism schism, right? Uh, especially of the Roman, the Vaticanian, Roman Catholic, Vaticanian Church. And then to be using the same terminology of derision. It's the papists who created this term of pagan. And we did something on our channel about pagan. Check that video out. It should be up on, I think, Rastafari Jews and also others, you know, download back that particular video up there. It might be a little bit, I'm not going to say advanced, but you know how we get, try to get into the detail and connect the dots, right? And we're trying to connect the many dots in each one of these short vlogs. So sometimes one have to take in a bite-sized portion or kind of pause it, right? And even come back to pause it, take a couple of notes. Was I clear on that? Were you able to pick up on that? Take some notes, right? But here, the note on this, Jeremiah, Jeremiah applies to the Christmas tree in spirit and in truth. Don't let them fool you. They say, oh, it's only if you are worshiping the Christmas tree. Now, the question now is define what worship is. Clearly, scripturally, biblically, from a Hebrew perspective, why are we going right here to Jeremiah 10 and 2? Right? To Jeremiah 10 and 2. Because in Jeremiah 10 and 2, it says, Learn not the way of the heathen. What does this mean, Habarim? Right? The way of the Goy, the Goyim. The Goyim. Israel is a Goy. Yisrael is a Goy. Goy is singular. It's a Kadosh Goy. Right? The Gentiles are foreign nation, other nations. Other nations. Let's go into Jeremiah and let's go to, uh oh, Jeremiah 10. Look at the first verse. Hear ye y'all the word that Yahweh, hey, Yahweh speaketh to you. O house of Israel. O Bayit Yisrael. O Beta Israel. So who is being spoken to? Who is speaking? Right? It's the word of Yahweh, hey, right? That is speaking to the Beta Israel. This reminds me of what Robainu, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right? The word become flesh. Remember, it said the word. So the word, right, that he who be who he be speaketh, that Yahweh, right, speaketh. Now, here's what's interesting. Yeshua says that his words are not his own, but his words are his father's words. His teaching are his father's teaching, his father's Talmud. Talmud is an operative word, right, in Hebrew, and it's in the scripture, right, if you learn Hebrew, meaning teaching. Right, the teaching, right? Speak if to you, O house of Israel. Didn't Yeshua say, I have not been sent but to the lost sheep of the Beit, Bayit, Israel, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? So, definitely, the Hebrews and Israelites, as a basic point and even basic point of order, have a basic point that, first and foremostly, this is speaking to a particular group of people, it's not speaking to the whole world here. It's we as Yisrael, repping he who be who he be, that must speak to the whole world. All right? But first we have to hear what he speaketh. We have to hear what the logos or the word of Yahweh, right? Yahweh is to the Bait Yisrael. Right? So in speaking to the Beta Israel or the house of Israel, thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. It's interesting that every time there's some kind of a eclipse or something going on, you hear all these crazy pronostications that go on. 
oh wow you heard about the the, the eclipse and and this is gonna happen that's gonna oh what's gonna happen you know i gotta store up on extra food because they said that all the lights and electricity didn't go out well that might happen one day but notice how their dis their, their, their dismay <laughs> is because of the signs of the heaven for the heathen are dismayed lying at them for the customs of the people are vain now what's the word vain right hebel and habel hebel habel is a vapor a breath it's like <sighs> isn't that how the the folly days the holiday the folly day season how the holiday the folly day season are it is it, it, vain it's something like vain all the build up to it and then it comes it goes and people just feel exhausted right for one cut of a tree out of the forest the work of the hands of a workman with the axe now this verse here they deck it with silver and with gold they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not right they are upright as a palm tree but speak not they must needs be born because they cannot go be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil neither neither also in them to do good now note what we began off with two trees in the garden asking the question was one of them the tree of the knowledge of good and evil well, one, one, let me ask again. Was one of them the Christmas tree? Two trees in the garden, one of them the Christmas tree? The Christmas tree was the Christmas tree. Was Christmas tree one of them? Was the Christmas tree one of them? Because notice the good and evil link even right here in this particular verse that's talking about customs of other nations. Customs of other peoples, of other nations. So what's the origin, right? Pray tell, do tell. What is the origin Right? What is the origin of the Christmas tree tradition? See, that's, this is where we sought to actually get into a little bit more on the whole Christmas tree. Right? The, you know, the Christmas tree and the Christmas tree tradition. What's going on here, brothers and sisters? Give me one moment right here. Just checking my power, the power cord on this. As you can see, 58. Okay, there we go. All right. So notice the last verse right here says, be not afraid of them. You know why these, some of these um, ones and ones, you know, are defending the Christmas tree, especially among some black Christians and ones out there on some of these platforms and elsewhere. Why are they defending this? Why are they defending the Christmas tree after all the, the good of Christmas in relation to Christ's birth? Okay, no problem with that. But, when one's asked you, well, it's on the 25th of December, that's the solstice. We know that in other nations, among other nationalities, other nations, that from a Hebrew perspective, we may refer to them as heathen, right? Worshipped or had customs. Notice what it says. It says up here, for the customs, for the, cu for the customs, right? The chukah, for the custom of the people, right? Of the people are in vain, right? But notice what it says, be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil. Some people don't want to recognize the Stockholm of the Christmas tree. The, the Stockholm, like they're in a stock, like somebody who has been taken like hostage. They've been taken hostage. It's almost like they've been deprived of uh, free will. <laughs> right? Their free will is not so free. Right? Because they think that if a year come in, Holiday season, holiday season come in, like Christmas. If they don't put up a Christmas, my mama did it, my grandmama did it, right? Or my, my, my mama and papa did it, my grandparents did it, my great-grandparents did it. You know, we did this. This is our tradition. This is our custom. You know, a lot of our people are superstitious, right? A lot of people are superstitious, right? See, so you have to, first of all, recognize, or rather, what is it that you are superstitious about? Especially as you're growing in grace. I'm not saying that you will always have to be superstitious, but you should not rule it out. Right? Some say, oh, I'm just, it's just a tree. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it for the children. Or, or they'll use the children. Notice how they use the children. So you're doing this thing that the scripture clearly gives a very clear indication that this later tradition you're doing in spirit is like the earlier tradition. When Cain, Cain killed Hebel, Hebel. Abel killed Abel, right? And yesterday or the other day when 
a black man kills another black man, right? Or a man kills another man. What's really different? The, the type of weapon they use? Maybe one use a knife, maybe one use a dagger, maybe one use a, a, a sicari, right? Maybe one use a, a cut piece of cut glass, a broken bottle. But the point is, the same spirit that prompted one to murder back then is the same spirit, an evil spirit, that prompts one to murder, I'm using operative word, murder someone today. So the same spirit that prompted the heathen observance, right, of this tree, decking this tree, and a lot of other decadence, right, back then, even in Yeremiah, 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 Jeremiah's time, Artemis' time, is the same spirit, right, that a hundred years ago. Did you know that this practice was not even so popular? Hold on for a moment. Y'all seen that one right there? Let's see. Oh, it was actually the next one, the very next one. Look at this right here. Public notice. Public notice. The observation of Christmas having been deemed a sacrilege, the exchanging of gifts and greetings, right? Um, dressing in fine clothing, feasting and similar satanical practices are hereby forbidden with the offender liable to a fine of five shillings. This is a public, notice they put the K on it, public right? notice, public notice. Did you know that Christmas, why right, Christmas was illegal in the U.S., the United States of America, yes, the United States of America, right, until 1836. Uh-oh. Until what? 1836. So that means that in 1936, it was 100 years, and we're going to 2022. So it's a little less, right, than 200 years. But that until 1836, Christmas, right, the Christmas that people be doing nowadays and everything, right, in that spirit, in those spirits, right, was illegal, was illegal in the U.S. So were our great grandmamas and grandpapas that, were doing the Christmas thing after 1836, they were the righteous ones, but the ones before 1836 when Christmas was illegal that didn't do Christmas, they were the unrighteous ones. See, they didn't even get into this when he went into this whole Christmas and Christmas tree and December 25th thing, so forth and so on. But it was, it was considered an ancient, they, 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 that word go again. The proper word is heathen. It's, it's a practice. You see the verse. We just quote the verse from Jeremiah. You see it in, in say pagan. If anybody can find pagan in the King James 1611 Bible, please do. You can't find pagan one time. It's a Roman Catholic um, papal distraction, diversion. It was, some, it was a terminology they used against their enemies for the Beta Bait Yisrael the terminology used for our enemies, right, vis-a-vis -vis Kol Yisrael, Kadosh Goy, right, is Goyim, Goyim, which can be and has been translated as heathen, as Gentiles, and as nations, right, other nations. Let other nations have their practices, right? That's so when people talk about Christ speaking about it's not what goes in the, a man's mouth that defiles a man, but, but what comes out of it could come from his heart. The whole context of there is eating bread with dirty hands. It's not about eating pork. It is the counterfeit latter-day wasp, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Right? Because what's interesting is that in many cultures of the East and in ancient cultures, a lot of the people basically weeded off of those things. Even they came from another culture and accepted Moshia because they were around Yehudi, right? That did not practice these sort of things. 
and they knew from the gospel that Yeshua said salvation is of the Jews, that those practices that were right and accurately of the true tradition that Yeshua HaMoshiach observed, like HaTorah is what we should do. This is not Judaizers, they talk about the Judaizers, a lot of one of those cracker, those cracker barrel terms. We're going to address that. But here I want you to see this right here, that Christmas was illegal in the U.S. until according to this meme here, 1836. All right, so it being illegal, if it's legal, it's good, right? If it's illegal, it's bad. Just use that as, as a basic point of reference. So legal, good. If something is legal, good. Legalize it, right? If it's illegal, bad. All right, so the good, the knowledge of the good and evil of Christmas. The knowledge of the good and evil of Christmas. All right, Christmas is not accepted by Christ, this meme says here. The Bible condemns these practices. Why do millions of church folks celebrate them along with the world? Well, here is the interesting thing. Remember the meme I just showed you? What none of them are using is the correct words. Heathen, Gentile nations. Heathen, Gentile nations. Right? So the Christmas tree and this tree decorating tradition. Right? other cultures. We don't have a Hebrew or Israelite. So for us as Hebrew and Israelites, let's just say that we decided, yeah, we're going to do some, quote, I'm speaking rhetorically here, right? Um, uh, uh, um, what's the word again? Um, hypothetically. I'm speaking hypothetically here, right? Say we as Israelites, okay, we're going to do this thing, right? But we're going to try to keep it to Torah as best to what Yeshua said. Salvations of the Yehudi. We're going to keep it to what Yahweh Eloheinu commanded, right? You're not going to make the, the law of Elohim like of invalid as they did with the halakha about you can't eat bread unless you go through all these ritualistic practices of washing your hands, right? We couldn't do a tree. We couldn't do a tree. Even we said, okay, we will observe the birth of Christ, the Moshiach. We couldn't do a tree as Israelites. Why? Because that verse I just showed you in Jeremiah chapter 10 is speaking to us as Israelite. So you have some of these black folks that will say they're not Israelites. That they're just an African American or they're an African black person or, you know, whatever they want to call themselves. You know what I mean? But they're not an Israelite. They'll stand 10 toes down on not being an Israelite. We have to just say, well, enjoy your heathen Gentile nations. You know, custom and tradition. But know this, when Yeshua said, Yeshua said, we know what we worship for salvations of the Jews. When Paul said, Paul, you know Paul, right? They, they, they ask the Christians that want to defend this, this Christmas thing, right? You know Paul. Paul says something very interesting. Let me show you this verse right here that Paul says something very interesting, right? Because the good evil in verse 5 you see the link there with the tree, right, of the knowledge of good evil, right? Let's go to this verse that Paul says. He says, um, sinners, right, sinners, right, and let's put Gentiles, right, let's go back here, Gentiles, right, that Gentiles, there we go, right here, boom, in Galatians 2 and 15, this is Galatians, right, Paul, his his epistle, his response to the community of Nazarene, Christianoi, and, and Galatia. He says, we who are Yehudim. He said, we who are Yehudim, we who are Judeans, who are Judahites, we who are Jews, even we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, right? But he says, we who are Yehudim, by nature, by nature, by nature, and not sinners, uh-oh, of the Gentiles, of the Goyim, of the heathen, of the nations. So here in the New Testament, could you hear some folks talk about, oh, oh, the Judaizers. Could we talk about the law, right? From Torah to Torah, from Torah of Moshe to Torah of Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? We talk about Torah, 
They'll say, oh, you're a Judaizer trying to take people back to the old covenant and to, and to the sacrifices and blah, 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 right? But note this, they will try to condemn the Jews as though the apostles and disciples were not Yehudi and were not Israelites and Hebrews himself. But here we have the one that most Gentile Christians and black people that want to act like Gentiles want to try to twist up his words, confuse his wisdom, speaking about the apostle Paul, Rav Shaul, here he says in Galatians 2.15, we who are Yehudin, who are Jews, we who are Yehudin, like when Moshe Yeshua says, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Yehudin. Right? To show the context. Right? What it was is like, there were those of our people, he came to his own, but his own received him not, but as many that did receive him, he gave them the power, the authority to become the B'nai Elohim. Right? This is speaking firstly to the Israelites and to Yehuda and, and to the Jews. Right? That many the majority, we could say like the 85, maybe like 85%, definitely over 50%, right? Especially the religious leaders who, who would have, should have been the ones that knew the truth. They, they didn't know that he was true, but they got caught up in falseness, right? The context is Hebraic, is Judaic. They try to make it seem as though there's the Judaizers, almost like the Jews, the Yehudim lost out the Israelites lost out. Now, ha, 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 we got it because you're a crucified Messiah. And yeah, we had to do some bid. We had to do some judgment. We can even talk about the 400 years all as a working out, like, like, like um, doing our bid. But now, we who are Yehudim by nature, Yehudim by, by Jews by nature. I'm going to leave this on the screen for a moment. Because you see what he says? We are not sinners of the Gentiles. So even in the time of Paul, he's saying that the Gentiles, <laughs> right? No, it's the ethnos. The ethnos, right? The ethnos, right? This is a term that says that Paul uses the term for Gentile Christians, right? So he said that the Gentile Christians, according to what Paul is saying here, are sinners. Right, so Paul is clearly making a distinction. Right, knows what it says right here. Especially, especially, specifically, a foreign, non-Yehudi one. Usually, by implication, see they put it in their definition: pagan, right, a heathen, a pagan, right, Gentile, heathen, nation, people. You see the last four words. That's usually when you learn how to read the Strong's definition. That's how you find this word translated right in the scripts right so paul is making a very clear distinction between the yehudim the jews especially yehudim like him right who have faith that yeshua hamoshiach ben elohim who that yeshua is the messiah son of the power son of the living god Yahuwah Eloheinu, right? Very clear. Just want to point this out to you because it's significant, right? Because when you listen to a lot of Christians, there's a lot of Christians that seem to have a have an anti-Jewish. I can understand why some of the later day, um, you know, Jews, you know, be the way they are, you know, because we are encountering this as we reclaim our identity as well, right? even among some of our own people, people who might be ethnically Yisrael, they may be of Israel because they're black people like us, they have this 4 year experience, so forth and so on, maybe family, whatever like that, but their spirit, right, in their spirit, notice what he says, by nature, we are Yehudi by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Why did Paul say that? It could seem like a diss, right? He said that we're Yehudi by nature, but we have a culture, a tradition of being in this covenant and having um, laws, statutes, commandments, the Torah, the direction, instruction, teaching to observe. 
Why the Gentiles, the other nations, never had none of that. That's why the verse we showed you in Jeremiah chapter 10, it says, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the Gentiles. Why? Because the Gentiles are sinners by nature. When we say sinners by nature, compared to what we were given, right, to observe the covenant that we were given, right, as the Bayit Yisrael as B'nai Yisrael, as a house of Israel, as the sons of Israel. It's totally different. This is why it says that Yeshua, right? Yeshua, Yoshia. Yeshua, Yoshia. Yeshua come to save what? His people, his people from their sins, from their uckery. First to the Yehudi and then to the Gentiles. So even there, there is an order. It's not first the Yehudi, right? And then it's the Gentile, and then it's all about the Gentiles. The Gentiles can take this which way they want. They can come in with Christmas, Easter egg, bunny rabbit, right? And the rest of us, right, who know this script is our scripts and this Moshia is our Moshia can't say nothing about it to defend the truth. Just wanted to share that particular verse right there, right? So even hypothetically, if we were to say, well, we're going to observe this thing. But as Israelites, as Israelites, we're going we're gonna to not observe anything in this so-called Christmas thing that is heathen, nation, Gentile. We can't do the Christmas tree thing, right? Can't do the Santa Claus thing. Elves, what are the elves? St. Nick, St. Nick, right? Back in the days, right, when ones and ones like us used to shave, nicking yourself is cutting. A nick is like a cut. Nick, nick and... Oh, that's nip and tuck, but nick, to nick somebody, right? To nick is also to kind of like um, boost something or steal something, <laughs> right? But they said that St. Nicholas was the patron saint of thieves, right? Father Christmas, Father Christmas. Is Santa Claus the father of their Jesus Christ? Question mark. Uh, just a question mark. They would say, you're being facetious and you're going to go to hell. That's how they talk because they're all that spookism. Right? It's very clear that a little child will begin to think, well, Santa Claus, he has a beard. Right? They look at Michelangelo Sistine Chapel. Well, he got a beard too. That's the face of God there. Right? And they begin to associate in their mind that Santa Claus. How many of you all thought that Santa Claus was Jesus' father? We should probably just do a video with that title. How many of you all thought Santa Claus was Jesus' father? Well, well he's not. Magical helpers, magical helpers, right? Couple of elves, couple of dwarves, couple of reindeer, um, Mrs. Claus too, ain't this something? I guess this is part of the feministic bend of the latter-day Gentile times, right? But the whole shebang there, they make all these gifts, they sail, uh, they fly through the, it, come on, this is crap. Worldliness, right? Heathen, Gentile, festivals, tradition. Greed, materialism, Christ's mass, December 25th, Saturnalia, winter solstice. What in the world does that have to do? So that means that even if we were to say that, yeah, to go along to get along, but we're going to keep to the law, statutes, and commandments and keep to the faith and the teaching of Moshiach, we won't be able to observe none of these things. Basically, we won't be able to observe none of these. That's all we don't. Why? Because the scripture condemns these practices. Yet there's millions of so-called church folks that celebrate them along with the world. But remember what we showed you beforehand that up until 1836, Christmas was illegal in the U.S. So the question you have to ask is what happened? What happened leading up to 1836 that Christmas became legal? Why? Christmas became legal. Notice the message up here. The observe, observation of Christmas having been deemed a sacrilege. So that means up until 1836, it was deemed a sacrilege. The exchanging of gifts and greetings, dressing in fine clothing, feasting, and similar satanical practices are hereby forbidden, verboten, with the offender liable to a... A fine of five shillings. Now, I don't know how much five shillings would have been back then, but it, it, ain't that interesting? That was actually illegal. Right? It was illegal. 
Right. So what did they know? Now this is during the time of the Protestant, the Protestant Reformation, which is the Church of Sardis. If you look at Revelation, this will be at the Church of Sardis, things started to change. At the Church of Sardis, go to Revelation, look at the Church of Sardis. So the Protestant Reformation has to do with the Church Age of Sardis or Christianity during the time of the Protestant Reformation. Right? When we look at the seven churches. Right? Now, which Constantine are we speaking about? Are we speaking about the real Constantine or the fake Constantine? Right? Well, this is what they say, who invented Christmas, right? Did not originate in the Christian religion, right? It was come from, they say, ancient Rome. Every year in December, they held a festival called Saturnalia in honor of their god, Saturn. So that once again tells you right here. Here, here, here. The mystery of the pagan origin. They love to use the word pagan because they know that by using the word pagan and pagan gods, you are diverting the sight off of the target. You're diverting the sight off of the target. And, it, and you notice that everybody will use it, will point to the Bible, but yet the Bible doesn't, the KJV, 400 year Bible, doesn't use it one time. So they use this Roman term. Now this whole thing about Nimrod, the connection with Nimrod, from my research, all of that is some hodgepodge, right, that has been put into the mix. But the actual evidence, what's the actual evidence? And most ones will point to this right here. Let's see if we can, okay, just so you can see this for a moment. They liken this to this right here, right? Also, this lichen to this right here, right? It was outlawed in all 13 colonies because it was based on paganism, right? The tree is interpreted originally by the cult as a phallus and the, and the, and the wreath as a vagina. So it does have sexual connotation, but a lot of the Christians are slow, right? That's getting... So everything they trace it back to Nimrod, you know why they do this? Because this was a part of white supremacy, part of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Right? They put this under the son of Cush. We're going to have to address well, this whole Nimrod thing. Right? Why Nimrod the boogeyman? Right? The latter-day Jewish boogeyman. Well, he actually is because when we look at the earlier sources, it doesn't link to Nimrod. It's only the later sources and the later interpretations. Right? We also have the Israelites of Ethiopia, some ancient documents to refer to. Now let's go through this right here. Right. Okay, the two Babylons. We're going to touch on this two Babylons thing. The serpent is still using a tree. Ain't that something? Good meme there. The serpent is still using a tree to offend Yahweh Elohim. Right? So no. Right? Say no. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everything you learn about it. Right? You, there's, there's, the, there's the... The good is when they try to associate it with the birth of Jesus. Right? Even though they can't find one tree at least within the narrative that they can say, well, look, there was a tree right there and they decorated this tree. You can't find it nowhere. Even earlier traditions of Christianity viewed it as it was a sacrilege. So what did they know that Christians have forgotten? It's just interesting. It's like one time they, people pull the wool over your eyes, then you pull the wool back over your eyes so you can see, and then they get to pull the wool back over your eyes again. I mean, what's going on here? And then just to hear some of these, um, you know, black uh, Christian ministers trying to defend it, right, as something of consciousness, right? This is just what the Gentiles, the heathen, the European nations, right, taking other traditions. That's what they did. They took this Jewish Judaic tradition, right, and inserted their romantic ideas, their Romanistic ideas ideas, right? So they, they just love that P word, Pagan, right? They love that right there. Another kind of a link to it, right? And there's a lot of credibility. There's a lot of credibility to this right here. Let's see right here. Okay, do not learn the ways of the heathen. All right. Okay. Okay, that's the contrast right there. Let's see if we can find this right here. Um, let's see. Like to do something on the um, yeah something on Nimrod on the whole Nimrod 
Look, okay, here's the book right here. Okay, is this book? Is this book, which is another kind of good evil kind of thing? There's some true factual information in the book Two Babylons. There's also some things that are not factual. So there's some good information here, and there's some there's some true information here, and there's some false information. One thing this book does, and a lot of um, black people and even some of the, I can understand why the Israelites, because you know Nimrod is is Kush. So some of the Israelites have a fanatic anti-Ethiopian Kush bent. This is a latter-day thing since 70 AD, since one West that has come in, right? So they'll just say they'll believe all the lies against Nimrod or Kush because he's Kush and Kush is Ethiopia, right? But see, truth doesn't work like that. Truth works like, well, even if this person who might be a bad person did not do this crime, we're not going to charge him with this crime without evidence. Most of the evidence, right, comes from this particular book by someone named Reverend Alexander Hislop. Now, he has a lot of interesting research, but the fact that they point to the worship of Nimrod and his wife is going against ancient, I call it ancient, black supremacy. It's latter-day white Christian supremacy going against ancient black supremacy that that co-signs this anti-Nimrod agenda. And even some of the Yehudi, they'll say, well, here when you say he was a mighty man before the Lord, though we find this elsewhere, they say, well, this meant that he went against the Lord. Right? He went against the Lord. But if you read it from how the scripture makes it out to be, that he was he was like, like we say, like, like a a mighty man in the way of the Lord. It never even connects him. The only connection that, that Nimrod has with Babel is that the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. But yet in the entire chapter 11 of Genesis, not one mention. He's mentioned chapter 10 where it goes to lineages, genealogy, then it brings him there. But then it says as they, as they journeyed from the east, they came across a plain. Never says who the they were. Right? Who the they were. Right? They were the sons of, you know, sons of Noch, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Right? Now when you read books like the Ethiopic Jubilees and Enoch, you can get more of the fuller picture. And this is why we give thanks to the Israelites of Ethiopia, preserving many of those ancient scriptures. Also, keeping within our canon of scripture, documents like the Apocryphal, Pseudepigraphal, even some of the lost books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden, that were read by the early, you know, we said the early church, as well as by the intertestamental, we could say Judah, the Jews, right, between Malachi and the Israelites, between Malachi and Matthew. So a lot of this pseudo information about Nimrod, right, and his wife Sam Samaris, like, okay, when I'm gonna do a whole video on this, brothers and sisters, just to share a little bit on it, because this is a segue, because a lot of ones are gonna point to this as as a point of reference, and I've read it. We have a copy of it. We've read it, right? And when we read it critically, right, by reading it critically. Right, this this is the epicenter of it, and so many people have read this book and have regurgitated the same information, but yet the original information he puts there is circumstantial at best. It's not like one is saying, "Well, it was written in this document, and here's a manuscript, or written in this wall painting, or we found on this monument." or we found some papyrus, or we found some, some carvings, some engravings. Where do they get this from? How do we know that the name of Nimrod's wife was Samaris? Samaris, Samarius, whatever. How do we know that was her name? Sound like a Greek name. How do we know that was her name? Where do we get that name from? Where did Anthony Hislop get that name from? So what Anthony Hislop does in the two Babylons or the papal worship is combine the true with untrue. And we submit to you that there was an agenda, right? An agenda afoot, right? Because when the white man reads the Bible and he see Ethiopia, he see Kush there, 
right? He see the connection, right? With, as one, one brother said, like the top of the food chain, like black people-wise, if we look at the order of the Bible and what the Bible is saying. The first Peleus and people you see, it says Ethiopia, right? So we already know this is before Rome, before Greece, before all these other places, right? Even before Kush, we have Ethiopia or Kush. Before Kush, we have Kush in the scripts. Now, ones can reason that away, whatever way they want to reason that away, but when a white man reads the Bible, he knows that black people in the ancient times, black peoples, melanated peoples, were great in many different ways. Good, bad, ugly, but, but they were the ones running the world stage. We are only entered into a little less than 2,000, say about 2,000 years, roughly, right? When the black man, woman and child, but the black man has progressively fallen more and more off, right? And white supremacy, right, or the heathen Gentile nations have risen up, right? But you have to understand what they do. They just don't rely on their religious power, on their army or military power. They also rely on their literary power. Right? In other words, you put some things like we go to Anthony Hislop's book, right? Some areas you can point to some things, and we can say, yeah, that's true because here's the evidence for it. There's other things that he'll point out in his book, and it sounds true. It sounds believable. It sounds believable. But where's the evidence for it? Like, where's the evidence of Nimrod's wife being named that? Where did that come from? Where's the evidence that, that he was married to his mother who was his wife? Where's the evidence for, for that? Right? Or that after he died, they performed this kind of... Where is the evidence for that? It seems like there's some historical information regarding the papacy, the papal authority, the Pope, and the Vatican. Right? And then there's other speculation that, well, all of this came from Nimrod. Right, is the worship of Nimrod and his wife. Because what they're saying to their fellow white Anglo-Saxon Protestants right, is watch that black stuff. Because remember, it was the Protestant church in the iconoclast phase where they whitewashed a lot of the black images. You remember the whitewashing was whitewashing. Now we know it was black icons. So think about it. Black icons that were in the Roman church, even the Western Gentile churches, right, that were in Europe, right, had black iconography. The further that we go in history and time, we see black icons. We come up to the time of the iconoclast phase where they whitewashed it. Right after that, we get the Protestant thing coming on. And ones like Anthony Hislop, right, and the Protestants were anti-papacy. They were anti-papacy. But what they threw in there, come on, the Protestants were called WASP, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. So there was also the racial, right? There was also the racial agenda. So we have to recognize that the Protestants never did anything without having that covering the racial agenda basis. So the anti-Nimrod, right, rhetoric is really an anti-black ancient civilization rhetoric, right? And the alleged facts that you see in a lot of these memes have never been substantiated. Now, yes, things about the Pope and Vatican and what they've been doing, a lot of the evidence that, you know, Vatican to keep a library, a lot of things are documented. So, so a lot of the things that you have in this book concerning the Pope and the Vatican, we can document it. It's like the whole thing about the mother and the child. He has this big point against the mother and child. In the ancient world, the majority of imagery that they find for mother and child tends to be Afro-Asiatic, tends to be Afro-Asiatic, and it tends to be black. I was going to do something right here on this as well to kind of show this. This is looking into some of the other memes, right, that we were getting ready, you know, to go into right here. You know, some of the other memes right here. Yeah, but um, let's see, where should we touch down? Where should we touch down? Okay, let's just touch down here. Like, this is some of the memes right here. You see all these black icons, right? Okay, this is zoom in right here. Black icons. I mean, come on. Some of them are so overtly. How about that sister right there? 
Then they're so overtly black. And they pl try to play us like we fools. Oh, you're trying to steal um, um, like white Jewish heritage. Right? You know. And see, a lot of that's also the white man doing that too. Remember, you got the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant that calls himself the true Christian. Right? And then you have other Jews that have the ascendancy in Judaism nowadays. Like the European Jews, we can't deny that, you know, it's like when we talk about Jew, right? Even we think Jew, we think, oh, the, the white Jew, well, we're talking about black people. We have to remind ourselves. Why? Because with media, right, with the news, media, school, education, especially over the past I can say over the past, um, since, since the time of the Holocaust, we're not going to make this about the Holocaust, but we had caught something that, who was his name? Uh, what's his name? What's his name? Bobby Hammett has said, he said that before the Holocaust, right, there was a view when looking at the Bible, they saw black people in, in the biblical view. In other words, because of what occurred and happened, in the Holocaust in Europe, right? And I got some things to say about that, that some of the pro-blacks and others, even some of the Israelites may not agree with, but I want you to hear me out on it. Because you say, one brother asked me, I think six, 000, six million, you know, were killed. And I came across some information, World at War, one documentary, some other documentaries. I said, whoa, I got to talk on this, right? But I'm not going to deny that they were targeted by the Nazis. See, because even... White on white crime happens. Let, let's point that out. You know, white on white crime. I mean, even black folks sometimes have we have this argument about whether somebody's black enough. You know, like we talk about Obama or whatnot. You know, so these reasons go on. They have it among themselves too. So-called white people, or European or non-black people, they have it among themselves. What we see in the European tradition of Christianity, right, is two things always seem to come out: a hatred against the Jews in white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity and a hatred and a patronizing of black people, right? A hatred and a patronizing of black people, right? Yeah, this is one we're going to touch on as well. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, look at some of this right here. I mean, it's, it's kind of so obvious. Either the baby is wearing white with swaddling cloth and you could tell he is melanated, right? He's melanated, darker than any so-called white man that I've seen in modern history, unless he's gone to his tanning salon and maybe his skin gonna turn red and he might damage his health to try to get dark like that. Let's just be real. Even me Mediterranean people who, who might have a little darkness, Sicilians, right? It's very rare that they would have such darkness. So we're not really talking about that. I'm not saying that there's not a black melanated connection there. We're saying that there is. But we're saying it's clear from looking at these iconography. I mean, I mean, I mean, come on now. Come on, it's trying to play us like we're stupid. Like, we're just seeing this. I'm just seeing that it seems to be showing a bunch of black men, right? Here as, who are these? These are the apostles. These are the Jews, right? The Jews who believe in Yeshua, in the Moshiach, Yeshua. Right? That's the only difference. Right? There were Jews who didn't believe in the Messiah, and there were the Jews who believed in the Messiah. What we get in the tradition of the New Testament is the Yehudi who believed in the Messiah. That's why I show you that verse where Paul says, We we are not, you know, we we are we are Jews by nature, right? Not sinners of the Gentile. Right? So so a lot of this right here, I mean we can go through this right here. Now one can say, Oh, look, look, the the devil over there looks real but dark? No, you look gray. You look a little gray. But you see, it's the black angel. It's the it's a, it's a black. You, 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 you can see. Right? So they're trying to play us like we stupid. Right? Like, like we're not really seeing this eyes because they never expect they shall go to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Remember we brought that out from Daniel's prophecy? They shall go to and fro. One way of interpreting that in modern technology is, is the modem. Modulation, demodulation, going to, modulation, demodulation, and fro. So, in looking at these particular pics, even where some of them might be a little bit dubious, right? You can still see that there was an ancient tradition that observed 
them as black people, right? The oldest tradition, right, in Europe. One of the last places that still had a lot of its old iconography was Russia. And then we get the Bolshevik, the Russian Revolution, and all that, the killing of, of the family, you know, of the czar and everything like that, the murder and everything, and destruction of churches and the destruction. What people don't recognize about the Russian Revolution is that part of that Bolshevik or whatever that was going on, it was trying to destroy black heritage and black Christian, Judeo-Christian legacy because a lot of art was destroyed because a lot of the art was hidden, right? A lot of this art that we're seeing now, a lot of it was hidden, right? And what's interesting that when you see some of the people who have, 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 have re-brought um, out a lot of this hidden art nowadays, some of them are, are you could say, are, 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 are white people, right? But they honor this art because they know it is the truth but that's over in 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 like europe and like eastern europe right i don't know like over here maybe it's a different kind of yeah i guess all black people not the same black people all white people not the same white people can we say that right there now here 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 i mean it's very clear what the idea is right here it's very clear right remember that some of these paintings and pictures may have lost a little bit over time. You know, it's the wear and tear, you know, that go on, but you can still see it very clearly. I mean, come on now. I mean, come on now. All right, so this is very clear, but then there was the whitewashing. When the whitewashing came along, right, the whitewashing, right, came along. Now, this is actually the icon, right, that Haile Selassie had commissioned for the altarpiece. Right in the church in Addis Ababa, right? This one right here. This is, you know, this is the iconography that Kadamawi Haile Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, his imperial majesty Haile Selassie the first, king of kings of Ethiopia, elect of God, that he had commissioned, right? And now this is interesting because this there is a description, an ancient description of what Mary her complexion looked like. Right? And this picture really brings it out, this painting right here. But this is the picture that His Majesty had commissioned for the altarpiece. Right? This is another version of it on the book cover. Right? Yes. Right? Now, the, the picture of Christ that you see over there, this was the Ethiopian. This was like maybe some hundred, hundred or more, maybe hundred to hundreds of years before right? the birth of the man-child. Right, Revelation chapter 12, Ijasagora, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, this man was born there, Psalm 87 verse 4, right, so we did this one years ago to show from one of the videos, the split screen, the likeness, and this was in a book by Dr. Ben that called this the Black Messiah, right, so that connection of the Black Messiah, right, the Black Messiah, yes, now there was something else that we sought to show, all right, all right, the crowning. All right, brothers and sisters. All right, okay, so let's just come out of this right here. Been a little bit long <laughs> on this right here. Hope you all enjoying yourselves right here and learning from this right here. Here, we'll leave this on the screen. Give thanks. This was um, put together by um, Sister Fanai. Right, the matriarch of Sight Media, Sister Fanai, Sunlight, Rastafari TV. Right. Ethiopians, black people, right, are being deceived or have been deceived. Let me do an update on that one right there. So you see even over here where it has the picture over here where you see the popes then, right, you know, worshiping the black Madonna. So what Anthony Hyslop is going against, you have to understand how deep this really goes. I'm going to have to do a whole video on that right there. Because this was about the, the Christmas tree, but then we started to see how all these points were connected. And though we can make one reasonment or one argument on this right here, like the two trees in the garden, right, was one of the trees, the Christmas tree. There was one tree was a tree of life, the Eitz Ha Chaim. The other was the Eitz Ha Da'at Torah, right, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And now how does the, the, the tree of the knowledge, right, the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil, this compares so well, right, with the whole Christmas thing, 
right? Human reasoning. Christmas is observed based on human reasoning, right? Envy, disharmony, jealousy, vanity. I'm talking about their, their, their Gentile tradition that have all these things, right? That we just mentioned in the other meme, the tree, Santa Claus, um, what was it? The tree, Santa Claus, it was December 25th, um, and a lot of other nonsense, right? Competition, fornication, right? The spirit of Satan, right? That's why it's so interesting that even if other Israelites, right, don't accept it because we point to Jeremiah, why don't you have joy, peace, gentleness, faith, meekness, goodness, temperance, long suffering? You know what I mean? Happiness. Because see, part of that, part of what's on that tree, those ten branches, Esaret Debarin. You see, when you're looking closely, we're speaking about no other gods. Remember the Shabbat, right? Don't take Hilehim, the power name, in vain, right? So there was two trees in the Gan Eden, right? These two trees, a tale of two trees, right? Of two trees, right? The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Isn't it interesting? Because there's a whole lot of things that happen around Christmas time, right? That would not happen if it did not have this satanic superimposition, right? Christmas, as most observe it, has little to nothing to do with what they claim. See, so remember, it's a knowledge of good and evil. So you're going to have the knowledge, my right, Christmas tree, knowledge of good and evil. Maybe we'll call it that. <laughs> Christmas tree knowledge of good and evil. And here, let's just begin off or seal up with where we began off, right? Let's see, knowledge of tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Some of the memes here. I'd um, like to get into a little more detail on it right here. Just going over what we showed already. Notice right there, the tree of knowledge, the veil, right? The veil. There's a veil. Remember pulling the veil over the eyes. The tree of knowledge, right? It was in the garden, but the tree that is mentioned to be in the midst, right, in the midst, right, the tree that was in the midst is a tree of life, right? Okay, here, right here, these things right here, right, right here, right here. The Christmas tree, right, the Gentile, heathen, stars, angels, idolatry, Santa Claus, Elf, St. Nick, Father Christmas, my father of Jesus question mark put that there right magical helpers worldliness heathen Gentile nations festivals these are festivals of other nations traditions greed materialism Christ mass December 25th Saturnalia and the whole connection with the winter winter solstice so it's these particular things right here 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 my knowledge do you have a knowledge Right? So when they tell you, well, it's about, it's all for the children. They'll say, well, we're doing this for the children. Right? We're doing this for the children. It's all about the children. That's the good. We're doing it because of Jesus. Jesus, that's blessed event, blessed birth for our Savior. That's the good they tell you about. But what it's really about, the real connection of it, is this right here, which is evil. All this is evil. Right? In its association with an event, right, the word become flesh and tabernacle amongst us, that was so good, right, to even, to even think that, you must be out of your mind, because here's a question again about um, Adam, where Ishto, Esheto, or Ish, Ishto, Adam and his woman, Adam and Eve, that you notice, even though the tree of life, according to the Bible, is in the midst, that they focused on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So notice what's on the tree, the fruit. What's the fruit of the two, the fruit of the two trees? The Christmas tree of knowledge, of good evil knowledge. The Christmas tree of good and evil. I, 
Notice that. The tree of knowledge, there was good. But it's, it wasn't good or evil. Think about that for a moment. It wasn't good or evil. Tree of knowledge of good and, right? Of good and evil, right? Hold on for a moment. Let's, let's take this back right here. And let's go right here. Learn not. Once again, right, right here, learn not, right, and learn not, right here. Get to this verse right here. Hear ye the word. I said the word became flesh, the word of Yahweh, hey, right, speaketh to you. Obey it, Yisrael. Right, obey it, Yisrael. Thus saith Yahuwah, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten with nails and with hammers that it move not. See, this should be so obvious. But one try to act like, you know, it's some trick because we're looking at Jeremiah. That was back then. We're not, we're not worshiping the tree. We're not worshiping the tree. But you, you have learned the ways of the heathen. Notice in this chapter, they don't say nothing about worshiping no tree. Notice, they don't say nothing about worshiping. It says, learn not the way of the heathen. Right? Because their customs are vain. For example, this whole tree thing. And decking it, all right? But notice this verse here, verse 5. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. It's like some of them, people can't leave this alone. They'll use their dead ancestors, grandma, grandpa, great-grandma, because they observed that they were good Christian folks. Therefore, I'm going to keep doing it. Even if they didn't know any better. Be not afraid of them. For they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Note that right there. Some are afraid of stopping these heathen, Gentile nations practice. They're afraid. They think that it's a superstition. If they stop doing it, I, I've been doing uh, Christmas and Easter egg, bunny rabbit, Christmas every year, all the time. If I don't do it, you know what I mean? If I don't do it this time. Right? That's why it says right here, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Right? Notice the knowledge here. The knowledge of good and evil. Bringing us back to our original premise right here. Right? The knowledge of good and evil. Right? The knowledge of good and evil. The two trees. Right, the trees, the trees, the trees, the two trees. Shalom Chavarim. Yes, I right. check out the description, check out the podcast, also check out the replays. Also have the podcast app as well. Check out the links in the description. Check out our main hub website, LOJS.org. Give thanks to the co-laborers, the Chavarim. Chabarim Shali, give thanks to the donators, those who donate, support the ministry, also share the information on their platforms and elsewhere with others. Give thanks. Be safe in this season, right? In this season, especially here at the end of the Gregorian Western Gentile year. Be safe, be well, and um, learn not the ways of the heathen. Don't be dismayed at their signs. It's just a sign of the time.